Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Emily. Today's video is all about the Junkin' Pumpkin Vintage Market. So I'm gonna take you with me as I prepare for the event, you know, the few days leading up where it comes to pricing things, tagging things, making sure I have everything that I need from my checklist, as well as getting all my money ready for the event. And then I'm gonna take you with me as I get set up and then the day of. So if that is something that you're interested in, then let's get started as I'm preparing for this event. All right, so I already have two of these totes um, labeled and packed away. So I'm working on this one. I still have all of this to work on um, and price and then set things aside that I want to do a slight little like upcycle with or add greenery or, or anything to. So I'm going to be working on that and um, to show you what I'm doing for my price tags. So I, I do have business cards, but I um, was too late um to remember to order them in time so what i did was i just cut out these pieces um it's just cardstock paper i have my own stamp with my logo on it so i just cut them out i think they're like two by two or no they're two and a half by two and a half um little squares and I stamp the one side with my logo and then on the other side is where I'm going to mark the price and then just attach it with um, with some twine. So that's what I'm going to do for this event. Normally I do my business cards, but um, I don't have that many to price everything. So let's get started. When I am preparing for markets like this or even craft fairs, I really try to tag my items as I'm making them and either putting them in a designated space or already putting them into containers so that I'm not stressed out, you know, the few days beforehand. So I am filming this actually a week, the weekend before, so I can, again, not rush and I can work on my pricing and make sure I have everything tagged, separate things. If I wanna try and put like items into containers, I can do that and again, I'm not feeling stressed. Um, sometimes that doesn't always happen. I still felt pressure by the end of the week, um, you know, the few days before the event, but I'm pretty sure that's a natural feeling. Um, they, you know, being anxious and making sure you have everything, it just, you know, goes, hand in hand with an event like this. So I um, I wanted to go over pricing. I have had questions in the past about pricing items. I have a video from a year ago, um, a little over a year ago, about a craft fair that I did. I will make sure to link those videos in the, or video in the, um, in the description if you're interested in that as well. Um, the information may overlap, but that was for a craft event. And so it was strictly, you know, craft items, handmade items. And this one is more of a vintage market. So I don't have as many handcrafted items. So if you're interested, like I said, I will link that. But when it comes to pricing items, um, especially these, you know, vintage items that I'm getting from estate sales and from, um, thrift stores and stuff. I always keep the price tag on them until I'm ready to price. I do like to try and get three to four times what I did pay for it. Um, you know, I'm spending time to find these items. I'm spending gas to get these items to and from the places. Um, so I like to try and make at least three or four times the amount. Um, that is just what I like to do. Um, I know for my booth, I will also add um, like whatever the price of the item is. If it's $5, I'll add 20% um, to that and then I'll times it by three. Um, that 20% helps with the 10% that the booth, um, that the store owners do take from me as well as, again, my time to drive down there and, and everything like that. So I do factor that in as well. If there are any other questions about pricing or even packing items, um, let me know in the comments and I will try and answer them as best as I can for you. So another thing that I like to do is um, when I'm packing, if I know, if I can visualize like a, 
a vignette, if you will, I will try and pack them together. So I'm going to show an example here. I have all of these items individually priced and they're, they're ready to go, but I visualize them together when I put them in the booth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to package them together how I want them styled so that the morning of I don't have to worry about that and I can just grab this out and all I'll have to do is fluff up the greenery a little bit and maybe like rearrange a pumpkin here or there. But I know that these items I want to keep together and stage them um, in the booth like this. So that's an example of some, something that I like to do. I do that a lot with like baskets. If I know I want to have greenery or items in the basket, I will price everything and then keep them together. I wanted to pop in and talk a little bit more about like the pre setup or mock setup that I do for myself. I really like to visualize things as much as I can and get things prepared before the day of the event so it's not as hectic. Um, that doesn't always happen. Like in this case, I was able to get like basically just the tables and a couple items that I was gonna use for height and for staging purposes. Of course, all of those items were also for sale, but I didn't do the full mock-up where I set everything up like I've done in the past. I really do like to try and set up as much as I can of the items that I'm also going to have and then take pictures of them so that, like I said, the day of, I'm like, okay, I know that this is gonna go over here, this will fit here, this will look good there, and it just will be less stressful. Um, that did not happen this time because I was in such the mode of pricing, tagging, and packing up that a couple days beforehand when I was you know, setting up the tables, I was like, I really don't wanna take everything out of all of the boxes that I have and then have to repackage everything. I just, I didn't have time. So I didn't end up doing that. And I will say it was a little crazy the morning of, which, is why I did not get footage of me setting up the morning of, but I do have footage of me setting up the night before. So let's get back into the video. Okay, so I like to have a box and I also have a bag with me and I'm going to follow my checklist. So I make a checklist of things that I want to make sure that I have with me for the event and I will cross them off as I put them either in my bag or in my container. So the first thing that I'm going to make sure I have is my this <laughs> that has all of my forms of payment. So I was able to take a screenshot of my QR codes and I put them on a Word document so that it is easy for someone to just come up and scan the QR codes versus trying to find me, um, like in Venmo or in PayPal. So as you can see, I do cash and I do credit. I have a square and I also do PayPal and Venmo for payments. So I make sure that I have this and I keep it out um, when, so that when people are shopping, they know what type of payment I take. So I'm gonna put that in here. And then um, going off of my list here, I wanna make sure that I have wire and wire cutters. Um, if I need to hang anything from the tent or, or for whatever reason, I wanna make sure that I have wire and wire cutters. And I want to make sure that I have scissors. Again, you just never know and I want to have a Sharpie and a pen. If I need to, um, if I forget to tag something, you know, put a price on something, then I'll be able to do it. Um, if someone wants me to hold an item for them while they continue shopping, I do that as well. And I'll just take a tag or one of my business cards and put their information on it so that I can set it aside for them when they come. Um, another thing that I wanna make sure that I have are the rest of my tags. So these are the tags that I made and these are the ones that I have left over. So I'm going to bring those. And then I also wanna make sure that I have plenty of twine because again, you just never know if you need to reprice something, you forgot to price something. So I've got my twine there. So I'm going to look at my list. I'm actually gonna cross these things off so that 
I know that I have them. So I did wire, wire, pen, tags, twine, scissors. Okay. Uh, these are my business cards. I ordered them off of Zazzle and I'm going to bring them with me as well. Now, for this bag, I want, let me move this. For this bag, I have a, um, I'll just show you this. I have, do, do, do. I have an apron and I keep this on me. I keep my cash and I keep my square um, in here. So I don't leave the cash lying around anywhere. Um, no, no one can grab it unless they're grabbing me. So, and then we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> so I have my apron and I'm going to put that in my, keep that in my bag. I'm going to make sure that I have some waters for tomorrow. Um, very good to stay hydrated. I am by myself, so I try not to drink too much water so that I don't have, you know, ask someone to watch the tent, my space for me while I run to the bathroom, but I want to stay hydrated. So I have a couple water bottles and I also am going to make sure that I have some snacks. Again, since I'm by myself, um, I'm not going to, you know, go stand 20 minutes at a food truck, but I want to make sure that I can get something. And I do have some friends that are hopefully going to be showing up, so they'll, you know, hold down the fort for me, or they'll go grab me some food. Um, so that's going to stay in this bag here. And then I have, again, I have a smaller one, and this is where I have just some extra pens and some extra business cards, but before the event, um, I like to keep my square. It is fully charged. Um, I keep my square in here, and I also am going to put my cash that I grabbed from the bank so that I can make change for people. I'm gonna keep that in here as well until I take it out and put it into my apron. So I'm gonna stick that in here as well. I'm gonna cross off that I grab snacks, water, and I got my cash and my square. So when it comes to the paint to cash, I did want to go over that really quick. Um, I do have it in another video, but I pull out specific amount of denominations for the events. So I'm going to, I pulled out $120 and I pulled out 25 $1 bills, seven $5 bills, four $10 bills, and one 20. Um, I've done this enough that I, I know that I don't need a bunch of $20 bills, um, but I definitely need a lot of ones and fives so that, you know, if someone, you know, if it's an $18, you know, item that they're buying and they only have a 20, you're going to need $2. So I made sure I definitely have enough ones. And again, since I do accept PayPal and Venmo and credit card, a lot of people these days are paying more with that than cash. Um, but this is what I did for the cash. And so I have that set aside. I have everything checked off except for weights. I need to make sure that I bring my weights with my tent um, to set up. So I have everything ready and we're going to go head down to the space so I can get my tent set up and then come back home, relax a little bit, make sure I didn't forget anything and then head down there again first thing tomorrow morning. We had to set our tent up with the weights the night before. That was one of the requirements of this venue. So we are here Friday night. Um, as you can see, pretty much everyone around us already has their tents ready to go. So what um, I am doing for, for myself, I did the same thing last year. We are getting not only the tent with the weights um, secured, but I'm also going to get all the tables, um, and all of those, the items that I prepped, like how I wanted height and everything, I'm getting all of that set up um, tonight or this night before I leave. And then we're going to put all of the containers into the tent and we're going to zip the tent up. And then I'm going to come down first thing the next morning, the day of the event, and I'm going to set everything up. Um, some of the vendors fully set their booths up and... 
I wish that I'd had the time, but with my work schedule, I had about an hour to get this done before the park closed. So that's why I did what I did. And having the tables and everything set up did help a lot. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, if I had prepped, if I had taken the items out and staged everything and took the pictures, I would have felt less stressed, but it is what it is and you go with the flow. I had a really good time in the morning. I had my coffee. All the vendors around were really nice. And like I said, there were shoppers that were already shopping. So I could not complain. I was done by the time everyone really started coming and it was great. So you just kind of roll with it. But I am going to stop talking now and I'm going to let you enjoy watching the rest of the setup and then the booth space on Saturday. I did not get any filming of that because like I said earlier, it just was too crazy Saturday morning for me by myself. So I hope you guys enjoy this part. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and you did find it informative. I hope so. If you do have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments and I will try to answer them as best as I can, especially if I forgot anything, I will definitely make sure to answer your questions. So I did just want to go over the event a little bit. It was, it was a really, really good day. I did this event last year and I doubled my sales this year from last year and it is because of one, well, maybe two things, but the biggest thing was 
I catered to the people that were going to be there. So last year I did a lot more of my handcrafted items. I did have vintage items and I did have some upcycle items, but most of the stuff that I brought last year were more of the handcrafted things that I do like to do here on my channel. So I did sell, I did well last year, but I really wanted to do better this year. And this year I focused more on vintage items. So all the, you know, items that I got from estate sales, from thrift stores, garage sales, things like that. I made sure that I had a lot of those type of items. I did bring some handcrafted things and some upcycled things, but my primary focus was vintage items and home decor items, and those are what sold. So that is why I'm pretty sure I doubled my sales this year. Also, the advertising for this event was phenomenal. The, um, the woman who puts it on, she does an outstanding job. So that also helped, you know, bringing awareness to people. You know, it was promoted on Facebook and throughout the local community. So it was a really, really good turnout. But I did want to share with you one thing that I do like to do. Um, it was really, really crazy at the beginning of the day. So while I was setting up, um, there were people that got there early and were already shopping. So I had already made, um, I think it, I had already made half of my booth space. Like it cost me $120 for this event to have a 10 by 10 square, um, space. And I'm pretty sure by the time I was finished setting up the items that I had sold, I had already made at least half of that money back. So I was feeling really good about the day and it just kept going. And people that were there in the morning were there to shop. They came in, they saw what they wanted, they got their items and they were on their way. They had bags upon bags. I did hold items for people that they bought from me so they could continue shopping because some of the items that I did have were larger. So I did that for them, which they really appreciated. And um, so what I do like to do is when I do make a sale after they leave, I do like to make a note. So I will write down the item that sells. I will put the price or like even if it's multiple items. So like in this case, I sold a crock and a vase to somebody. So the total was $35 and they paid with a credit card. So I did CC. If someone's paying cash, I do C, and then I also do Venmo and PayPal. So I do V for Venmo and P for PayPal. It just really helps me keep track. So at the end of the day, I can see everything that's sold. I can see how much money I made, and I can see what were the, you know, the biggest way of, of payment or forms of payment. I like to keep track of that for, for myself, for knowledge, for future events. So I did want to go over that really quick, and I... The, the majority of sales that I made were used with a credit card. So having that Square app is really important, um, or the Square, excuse me, having the Square is really important so you can take credit card sales. Um, if I had not taken credit card, um, I would have lost out on a lot of sales because the majority of my sales were from the Square, from using the Square because of the credit card. My next form of payment was cash, which was great. Um, so it was it was close. It was about $100 more that I sold with credit cards than with cash, but they were both really high. So I was happy about that. And then Venmo was the third runner up and then PayPal was the last form of payment that people used. Um, but having that QR code for them to scan was super easy and it worked really, really well. So I did wanna go over those. And I also wanna give a shout out to a follower. Her name is Misa and she came and she bought a beautiful vintage scale, which looks great in her home. She did share a picture on her Facebook page. Um, if I can remember, to find it. Misa, I promise I will put it down in the description if people are interested to follow you as well on Facebook, on your business page. And it was so nice to meet you. I had so much fun talking to you and I cannot wait to see your booth as well since you are local. So thank you again for coming and stopping in and saying hi. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if there are any other questions, let me know in the comments and I will definitely try to answer them. I hope you have a great rest of your week. 
Next week's video will definitely be um, like a DIY thrift flip video. I have a bunch of items that I was recording as I was making stuff for this event that I just never got to put into a video. So I will be sharing a bunch of those items next week and maybe the week after. It depends on how much I can cram into a video. So definitely keep in touch for next week's video. And then, I mean, Christmas is pretty much right around the corner. It's crazy to say. So I will be ramping up on Christmas, um, you know, thrift flips and DIY projects and also getting my booth space ready for Christmas as well. So stay tuned and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.